trouser length you have 42 inches so i'm going to add plus four inches i have 46 inches okay so the reason why i added four inches is because i'm going to make it of two inches or two and a half to turn it at the lower part and i need about one inch to connect it to the upper um, block or to the top okay so these are the basic measurements now one thing we discovered in this measurement was we only divided our waist and our hip by four okay those are the basic measurements those are the only measurements we divided by four every other measurement your thigh your knee your ankle we divided them by two so please don't make the mistake of dividing your thigh or your tie, your knee, or your ankle by four, okay? So divide the rest by two, except for your waist and your hip measurements. So join us on Facebook, Sewing is Fun by Three Designs. You can join us join us on Instagram, Tango Designs, and you can visit our website. I'm going to put down the details down below at the description bar. And you can also join us for our online trainings. So every of the details are going to be down below at the description bar. So now let's move to the fabric. So the first thing we have to do is to mark one inch. So I'm going to mark one inch all the way down. I'm going to mark one inch all the way down. So after marking the one inch, I'm going to make use of my pattern master to connect all the lines. So after connecting the lines, you are going to discover that the highest measurement we have is our hip measurement. So my hip measurement is basically 8.5. So I'm going to mark 8.5. I'm cutting the front panel. That is the front of the trousers, okay? Now, one thing you should take note of in trousers is you don't cut the front and the back together, okay? So you cut your front and then you use your front to cut your back. So this is my hip measurement, 8.5. So I'm going to make use of my pattern master again to connect the lines together. So the next thing you have to do, so this is our waist measurement, okay? So you mark four inches. You mark four inches. So from your waist to your hip, we have eight inches. You indicate where you have your eight inches. Your waist to your knee is 22 inches. So you could mark your own waist to knee, but mine is 22 inches. So I'm just going to connect the lines together. Connect your lines together. So don't forget to label. This is our hip, our knee, and of course, this becomes our trouser length. So having done that, the next thing you have to do is to mark the middle points. Don't forget that we made this of 8.5 to get this box, okay? So you just fold your tape measure like this. This is like the easiest way, 8.5 to indicate the middle okay so the middle is like 418 this is where we have the middle so you indicate the middle all the way down you indicate the middle all the way down so after indicating the middle all the way down you connect it to give us a straight line So after drawing the lines, okay, so this is the middle. What simply means that this becomes our middle line, okay? So now our waist measurement is 7.5. So you get the middle of the 7.5 inches. You get the middle of the 7.5. So the middle, this is where we have for the middle. So you place it at this point. You place your middle at this point, okay? So you mark where you have... 7.5 and you mark this point now the essence of you doing it this way the essence of you having a middle line is because it makes your choices to be equal you have equal sides on each um flap of the choices so i haven't done that you come to your knee measurement so our knee measurement is eight it simply means that we have four on both sides so you mark four inch and then you mark four inches on both sides 
So you come to your ankle measurement. That is where you have the lower block. Our ankle measurement is 6.5. So you have 6.5. You fold it into two to give us the middle. So you place it this way. 6.5. So when you've done that, you now connect the lines together with your pattern master. So you connect the lines together. Your waist to your 4 inches. So you connect your lines together. So it comes this way to your knee measurement. So you connect your knee measurement to your ankle. So you connect it together. It gives you a perfect fit. Okay. So this is what you have. So this is what you have. So now this one inch we left at this side, this one inch we left is for our sewing allowance. You observe that in our calculation, we didn't add any allowance. So this half inch we left, one inch we left is for our, our allowance. So however, the one inch might be too much for you. It depends. So if your one inch allowance is too much, you just make use of half inch. Or if you feel you are okay with one inch, you can just go with this so having done that the next thing you have to do now is to when you come to your hip measurement we are to mark our tie okay so you come to your hip measurement so you mark your tie our tie is 10.5 so you mark 10.5 at you come down with one inch on your hip measurement come down with one inch the essence of you coming down with one inch is to have freeness around the hip, okay? So you come down with one inch, you connect it, make sure you extend the line. This is your hip, this is the one inch. So you mark your time measurement. Our time measurement is 10.5. So you mark 10.5 this way. So when you mark your 10.5, this is what you have. When you mark your 10.5, this is what you have. So all you have to do now is to bring it from this, your waist, this way. Can you see it? So you have like an arm O. So what you do now is you connect it to your knee measurement. So this method is very easy. I hope you guys understand this. What we did was you come down with your hip measurements, from your hip measurements with one inch, you connect this to your tie measurement and at this point you connect it to your knee measurement so let me cut this out and show you guys what it looks like so after cutting it this is what you have you can see we have our flap measurements one inch below the hip measurement and you have your hip tie this is the center line so this is what you have for your trousers for the front panel okay so I'm just going to use this and place it on the fabric and show you guys. So this is the African print. I'm making use of this beautiful African print. So we have African prints are available at our store. So I'm going to drop the details down below if you want to shop for various African prints. Okay. So you just fold it into two this way. Now this is going to give us the front this is going to give us the front trousers, okay? So make sure. Now, one advantage of cutting on paper or making use of pattern, pattern is that it saves your fabric because you are not going to end up wasting fabric, okay? Because you can actually place it to see where you want it to fall. So this is what we have. So I'm going to cut this out and show you guys what next we have to do. So after cutting it out, this is what you have. So you can see, wow, this fabric is actually beautiful. This jumpsuit is going to be nice. So this is what you have. This is the front block of the trousers, okay? So what you are going to do is you are going to use this piece. I'm going to set this aside. After setting this aside, I'm going to fold another piece uh, for my black back block. Okay, now in your
your back block, you have to add extra inches to your back block because of the allowance. It gives freeness of the allowance to those of us that have a big, you know, big back side. So that is why you don't cut your back block and your front block together to avoid that. So you place your your fabric this way. This is your back panel. You place it this way. This is the back. You place it this way. Now, at this level, at this point, make sure you have three inches. Okay, so it's not up to three inches. So I'm going to refold it again and show you guys. So you place the front on the back. Okay. Now this is the ankle. So from this ankle, mark two inches. Okay, I hope the chalk is showing. From this ankle, you mark two inches. You mark two inches. From your ankle, mark two inches. Two inches. Two inches. When you come to this point, okay, you extend it with three inches. When you come to this point, you extend it with three inches. The essence of you extending it with three inches is because of the back side, okay? You know, for ladies or for guys, basically, your front and the back is not equal because of the back side. So you mark three inches. So you mark two inches this way. So you just connect yours like this. Mark two inches. Two inches. So this becomes the... This becomes the crotch for the back block. I hope you guys can see it. Okay. So this becomes the crotch for the back block this way. Now for the back block, you have to increase the back, the length of the back block. So you can increase it with either one inch or two inch. Basically, it depends on you. So you increase it. So this method is actually very easy. So you can see I slant it that way so it can also meet up with what you have at the back block. So I'm going to cut this out and show you guys what it looks like. So this is what we have. This is very easy. So I'm going to open this. I really love this fabric. So this is the back block. We have two pieces for the back block and we have two pieces this way for the front panel. So don't forget that this is a jumpsuit. So all this is just for the lower side or for the lower block. So we are going to set this aside and cut the upper block. Determine what you want. Is it a shoulder top, up shoulder, a tube, whatever. Determine that. So I'm just going to cut that and show you guys. For the choices, this is the front block. This is the back block. You can see that the front piece is actually bigger than the um the back piece is actually bigger than the front piece. Okay. So what you have to do now is to join it from here. You sew it from here. So you have one front piece and one back piece. So you sew it from here all the way down. So you set this aside. Okay, so because this is just going to give you a pair that is one leg. So you set this aside. So you take the other piece where you have the front piece and the back piece. And you join it the same way. Okay. So you take both the front and the back piece. And you join it the same way. So after sewing it all the way down, I'm going to show you guys what's next. So by the time you join it, you can see... You already have like a leg already, okay? So this is one piece and you have the second piece. So if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please kindly do so. Don't forget to join us on Facebook and you can also join us for online training. I'm going to put the details down below. <coughs> so you have this for the second leg. So this is the first pair of legs. This is the second pair of legs. So what you have to do is to leave about two inches. So from your two inches, you mark seven or eight inches. 
So you mark seven or eight inches. That is if you want your jumpsuit to have pockets. I have a video on how to fix pockets for trousers and how to fix a normal pocket. So I'm just going to go ahead, fix the pocket, and show you guys what next. So after fixing your pocket, I'm going to turn it this way. Wow, that is beautiful. So we have the leg already. So this is one piece. And so for the second piece, we are going to do the same. Turn it out. So I'm going to post the video on how to sew your pocket. But for those of you that don't know how to fix your pocket, you can just watch the video. Yeah, so you can see our trousers is. Let me let me raise it up for you guys to see better. Yeah. Thumbs up, like, share, and subscribe.